Hello there, I'm Christian and you're watching A Dev Story. Today I'm continuing the series of videos where I won't be the one talking but introducing other great professionals that made the hard choice of switching careers to software development and became successful in the field. In these short interviews you will get a graph of how is the process of becoming a software developer, the struggle, the hardships and tips that might help get you into it. Today I have the honor to introduce Lori King. She graduated as a bachelor in African and African American studies then got a master in sociology at Stanford. She worked as a researcher in Save Horizon, an NGO providing social services for victims of violence, performed as a teacher for several years, and also worked as a journalist. One day, she decided to switch to software development and found a job in one of the most prestigious software consultancy companies in the world, ThoughtWorks. She hasn't looked back since. Join me in this interview that I had with her recently. Hi, Lori. How are you? Hey, Christian. How are you? Good, good, good. Nice to see you. It's, it's... Good to see you, too. Thank you for having the time today to, to meet me. Anytime. You were really <laughs> helpful in my beginning of my journey to a developer, <laughs> so. Yeah, that's right. We met in 2017, right? You you were coming to an, a code bar event, and you were asking me some questions about databases. And yes. then... Uh, Three years later, or two years later, uh, you you became a developer, right? At, at ThoughtWorks, nonetheless. Yeah, it started as a grad at ThoughtWorks in 2019, and I just a few days ago learned that I got a promotion. Now I'm a consultant. Wow! Consultant Congratulations! So pretty exciting. Thank you. <laughs> really awesome. Really awesome. Really happy for you. Thank you. So you started first, like you started studying um, uh, African American studies then did a sociology master and then yes. you know different careers uh, researcher journalism learning spanish mm -hmm. and then became a developer like uh, how did you decide that you wanted to become a software developer well actually it was never my intention to become a software developer when i was teaching i was looking for a way to connect with my students and a lot of my students were really into video games then they had extensive vocabulary base in this so i thought maybe if I learned some coding through something like Scratch or processing language, I could teach them how to make video games in English and they would, they would be motivated to learn more through that. As it turns out, there wasn't, the school I was working at didn't have the space, to, the capacity to do those kinds of classes, but I, I was hooked. I liked coding. So uh, then when I started going to Code Bar and met a lot of professional developers and got a lot of help and support and a few years later, here I am. I mean, there's some stuff that happened in between, but that's the origin story. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what are like uh, those steps that you mentioned? Like, uh, what, what did it take for you to switch completely a career and become a software developer? I think the biggest change, the biggest uh, thing that happened was I was selected. There was this program called Rails Girl Sum of Code, and I applied with Amalia, who's also one of the organizers of Code Bar, and we were accepted. And our host company was ThoughtWorks. And when being there 40 hours a week for three months and seeing what professional developers do in a really supportive environment, I realized this is something I'd like to do. And this is possible if I find the right company. And I applied and, and I got through the, the process and then I started. I mean, there's a lot there's a lot of going from katas to being a developer, right? The katas, you can learn the language, but understanding the being in the right environment, you can grow in a way that helps you become a professional. Well, the biggest challenge is you have, again, you have my, maybe you have smaller projects that you work on to learn. Say you want to learn Java, so you're going to make a small, you're going to do a kata, or you're going to do a small project. But when you get to an enterprise level in uh, application, there are so many libraries and frameworks and dependencies. And then there's the, the business problem that you're trying to solve. And I did not realize that that was equally important to understand the business as having the, you know, learning um, you know, how lists works or arrays work in Java. It's sort of combining the business logic uh, and the code. And that's how you solve a problem. So that was the biggest challenge was realizing that and having to take a step back and dive into the project and understand they have a pro product mindset really and say what are we what are we doing what are we building and why funny you should ask i was never afraid before because i didn't realize how complex and how 
difficult it would be. So I went into this with the naive, the naive belief that, oh, this is fun. It's going to be great. I'll just learn every day and everything. I, I wouldn't say I thought it would be easy, but I didn't realize all of the challenges. Uh, but <laughs> there are plenty of days that I'm overwhelmed by all the things I don't know. I always remind myself not to compare myself to others, but to compare myself to where I was a year ago or where I was even two days ago. And that calms me down. But it's 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 not an easy process. And their imposter syndrome is everywhere. Uh, and we often question whether we should be here. But I have really good friends and really good um, mentors and coaches who always just slap me around. Say, hey, no, no, they don't slap me. But, you know, they say that's imposter syndrome. You can do this. It's, it's, it's really good to have that because, yeah, some, sometimes uh, like, um, you know, this meme on the Internet that says like uh, sometimes as a programmer, you are a god or a dog. Like sometimes you yes. feel like you solved everything and, and feel really smart. And then some other days you feel like, oh, maybe maybe I'm not that <laughs> <Yes>. smart. <laughs> what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah. I think you have to like uh, you have to like the struggle because, you know, it's really hard. And, you know, you're coding, you're coding, you're like, I hate this. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? But then there's that moment when you solve the problem that feels so good that makes you think, yeah, that's why I'm doing this. Yeah, that's true. So the key, the key phrase that you mentioned that like, you have to like the struggle. Uh, I will, I really like that phrase. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> I think it's part of the day to day. T talking about the day to day, what, what is the day to day for you? Like uh, software, as a software developer? First, check Slack and see what messages we got overnight. Uh, then uh, we do pair programming at ThoughtWorks. So reach out to my pair and we go over what we did the previous day, usually. And we look at the story card and we diagram out what are we going to do, and write out the steps we're going to do. And then we write some tests, they fail. We write, implement the code, then we refactor. Then we have stand up. We have our stand up actually midday because we have a, a, a multinational team. And some are outside of outside of Spain right now. Um, have a stand up, then go back to afternoon. The same thing. Okay, I use a couple of resources. Uh, a lot of it's my peers because they are very up to date on a lot of things. We pub uh, we <laughs> ThoughtWorks publishes the Tech Radar, and I read that to see because it's sort of the the hive, the million, the all of the people who work here contributing what they're working on different projects. So it also gives you a sense of what is a bigger picture. I follow some blogs, some twi Twitter accounts uh, that I just follow and read what they're going on. And I just do a lot of that more than anything else. Uh, ask people meetups back in the day before <laughs> we used to have meetups, often go to meetups because you can get a lot from talking to people who are working in, in the industry in different fields. I love this. This was a really good decision for me. I miss certain things. Obviously, I miss being an expert because from teaching for 10 years, I was I was a go-to person. I miss that. And when you change careers, you go from being an expert in one career to being a newbie in a different one. And that's challenging to the ego sometimes. Um, fortunately, uh, because of the, the place I'm working, we are really into collaboration and cultivating others. So I do get some of that. I get to help. And also through Code Bar, I get to go to Code Bar and I can coach people. And so I get some of that fulfillment of helping people as well. But no, it was the best decision because there's no limit. Technology changes so often. So even once I become an expert in one language or one framework, there'll be something else. So I'm never bored. I met Lori a few years ago at Code Bar. Code Bar is a charity that facilitates the growth of a diverse tech community by running free regular programming workshops for minority groups in tech. They have chapters in over 20 cities around the world, and during these times, many sessions are being held remotely. If you are interested in participating as a mentor or mentee, don't miss their website in the description. Lori became so committed to the organization that is now also an organizer. Have you been able to use uh, your previous skills, like uh, the, the skills that you've gathered from other other careers into software development? Definitely, definitely, definitely. I think the one of the most important is presentation. You know, when you can actually do presentations, uh, explaining something to a project manager. That I think coming from a non-tech background, I'm better. I, I'm I'm better able to connect with 
someone who may not have all the technical skills that we have. So we might use a lot of jargon that a PM is not going to necessarily understand, but I can break it down and explain it in a way that makes sense in common sense language. I think the important thing is to just go for it, not be afraid. You have to crawl before you can walk, before you can run, and not be afraid to fail. And as a professional developer, you will you will fail. You will break the build. You will um, have days when you don't know how to solve a problem. So just go for it and don't, don't be afraid. Or if you're afraid, don't let it hold you back. A second one, I would say, if someone is beginning to focus on one language and one framework, at the time. I think it's more important to have a really in-depth knowledge of that as opposed to a shallow knowledge of five languages because the concepts will stay the same. But if you just, if you don't understand the concepts, if you don't understand what a service is, if you don't understand what the controller does, it, you're not going to be able to go as far as you would if you focused on understanding those in one language, in one, one framework or something like that. I think that's the most important. And I think I mentioned it before, understand that you're really solving business problems. It's not about uh, writing lines of code, it's, it's writing code to solve a problem. So understand the business problem first. And as a beginner developer, that is not gonna hold you. You're as able to do that as an experienced developer because it's, it's just a business question. So those would be my most important things. And learn how to test because testing is, is key to writing good code. Through LinkedIn, because it's, uh, I have those notifications and it's the easiest there. I mean, you can email me, but chances are to get lost in the, the waves. So I would say reach out through LinkedIn. I encourage anyone who wants any questions to ping me. Awesome. Thank you very much again for your time today, Lori. It's, al you. it's always a pleasure to talk with you. The same. That was Lori. If you want to reach out to her, don't miss the details in the description. What do you think of the interview? Was it inspiring for you? Any additional topic that I should have covered? If so, don't forget to mention it in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.